In November of 2020, we sold our house that we'd lived in for more than a decade, put everything in storage, and I boarded a plane with three suitcases full of all of my stuff and landed in Copenhagen, Denmark, to join my husband, who'd been living there for about 16 months without me. My first couple weeks in a new country, everything seemed relatively normal, until then it wasn't so normal, and everything was closed, or luck it, as they say in Denmark. It should be worth the fight. So when things finally opened back up, the first thing, of course, I wanted to do was to go thrifting. I wanted to go junking and find lots of cool things. We don't have a car here in Copenhagen, so sometimes we ride our bike. Sometimes I break out the big bike. Sometimes we take the train. Sometimes we take our bikes on the train. Sometimes we take a boat. No, I'm just kidding. We don't really ever take a boat. And sometimes I walk like I did on this day. There must be some kind of black hole in this house. Every person could be you though. A pretty guy with a halo. But who am I? So on my agenda for today was to visit Lidkob. And my apologies to anybody who speaks Danish, but my Danish is not very good. And this is kind of like an indoor flea market. It is individual vendors, um, and they aren't really thrift store prices. That table that you just saw was about $100 US. like this place though is even though the prices aren't that great and they aren't like thrift store prices because these are people who are reselling is that they have a lot of home decor and housewares and it's big it's a pretty big place especially for being in the city where a lot of the thrift stores and secondhand shops are really small so I know my chances of finding at least one thing are pretty good so understand what we could do around the world say to Peru I did manage to find just a couple things in here. Stay tuned for the upcoming makeover of that cute little stool. You and me as Bonnie and Clyde. As we look at these amazingly beautiful flowers, I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications if you haven't done so already. Thanks. So I take my chances tonight. I got it shoes fight instead. So the next day, I walked over to the Norbro neighborhood to go to the Red Cross Megastore. It isn't really a megastore by like American standards, but considering again, this is a city store, they tend to be smaller. This one's pretty good size. I just don't know how you're I passed on the ginormous pieces of furniture because they were huge and the price was equally as huge. But I did head down to the basement, which is my favorite part of this store because it's like a little treasure hunt. It's full of artwork and some furniture and doodads and all kinds of good stuff. Let me see your beautiful grin, of imperfection, I'll make you... I finished up there and then headed home. I walked along the lakes to get home with my couple treasures that I found at the Red Cross Mega Store. It's really even made some new friends who, upon discovering that I did not have any food to give them, decided they didn't want to give me the time of day. Which brings me to the three projects that we're going to work on in today's video. I've got this amazing oil painting. We're going to paint the frame and then I'm going to do that little jug and that little stool and I'm going to save that fun box for another video. first makeover that we're going to tackle is this really cute little vintage jug. It's like made out of pottery, like a stoneware. I'm applying the first coat of paint, which is Farm Fresh, and then I let it dry, preferably overnight, and then I give it a second coat of Farm Fresh for full coverage. I 
decided to dry brush a little mint chip over the top of that just to kind of enhance some of the brush strokes I had going on and just to give it a little bit more interest so it wasn't so flat looking. I let my project dry overnight and then I gave it a really quick coat of Big Top before applying my Crackle Glaze. curious to see how this crackle glaze worked. Typically the ones I use are two-step. You apply step one, let it dry, apply step two, and then it crackles. This is just a single step crackle glaze, so I was a little dubious. It did okay. You can't really see the crackles here. So I applied some dark wax. Usually when you apply the dark wax, black wax, or any kind of colored wax, that's when the crackles really show up. I was a little bit disappointed in the crackles that I got with this. They are super, super fine. You can't even really see them on camera. So I'll have to play around around with it. I think maybe I applied it a little too thin and if I had applied it thicker I might have had better results. Project number two is this amazing oil painting that I got for seven dollars. I started with a coat of Kissing Booth and then I sprinkled in some Carnival Red which seems like it would be a weird combination but it's actually really pretty. I just kind of blended those together, let that all dry, and then hit it with a coat of clear wax, being extremely careful not to get anything on my oil painting itself. down the intensity of those two colors, I then applied some dark wax. And I love dark wax on these two colors because it really gives it a beautiful shine and just a beautiful depth. Our final project for this video is this little stool that I scored for 69 kroner, which is about 10 bucks. Yeah, I probably overpaid, but beggars can't be choosers these days. There was some missing veneer. I just gave it a light sand to clean some of that up and then started with a coat of Fancy Farm Girl. Let that fancy farm girl dry overnight, and now I'm trying a new product, which I actually scored on Facebook Marketplace here in Copenhagen, and this is a crackle medium, which is different than the crackle glaze. With a crackle medium, it typically goes in between two colors of paint, and then it cracks as your second coat of paint dries. I'm going to use it in a little bit different of a manner. I'm going to do like a pull-off method, which if you check out the video that I'm going to link up above, you can see where I did the same technique on a different project. So here I'm applying Prairie Gray and Gravel Road over the top of that crackle medium once it was dry. And I kind of want to have this sort of weathered wood kind of look to it. In theory, I will get crackles and some chippy effect by using my sea sponge and some water to pull off the paint in places where that crackle medium is. Next, I applied clear wax over my entire stool, working it in with my DIY paint wax brush. And then to enhance any crackling that I do have and to just kind of mellow things out, I applied a generous helping of dark wax. I let all that wax dry and then I buffed it up the next day and I have to tell you I didn't really love it. So I decided to add some white wax. It's okay, I don't really love the project. I don't think it turned out the way I had anticipated but it's doable and it's fine and you live and learn. Life's too short to get it all right. First time around. 
here's the super quirky gallery wall I have in our apartment here in Copenhagen. If you're interested in figuring out how to do a gallery wall, I do have a YouTube video on that, which I will link up above and put in the description box below. <laughs> totally love to know if you guys also have a project or projects that you didn't like the way they turned out, kind of like I didn't like the way my stool turned out. If so, drop it down in the comments. I would love to know. Thanks so much for watching today, you guys, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications so you'll know every time I upload a new video. See ya! I'm gonna get out of here